week two of the NFL preseason, where depth charts and playbooks will be put to the test. It's the Barons and the Buccaneers coming up next. And we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with their opponents. Brandon Gordon, and Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in preseason after a loss jumping all over their guys. So I learned one valuable lesson. Wins and losses count no matter what time of year it is. The kicker, Graham Gano, set to put his foot into this one. And off we go from Tampa. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They're led out by a former number two overall pick in the draft from BYU and Zach Wilson. And what was really attractive about Zach Wilson coming out of college, coming out of BYU, his ability to create and make plays when many people thought they didn't exist. But what's been even better is watch him improve in the pocket, able to hit the back foot, make the right read, and the right throws. And an early how do you do right there as they're going to bury him in the backfield. And it goes a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. You got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sets his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Shotgun snap, and again to Carter. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. An early task, two plays in. This is third and two. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. Yeah, he will not get there as they stop him short right around the 34-yard line. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Bucks will get ready to go on offense. Here's Allen on first and ten. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and ten. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now it's second and nine. Hey, boy, go. 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 
Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Charles, when you talk about free safeties, I think one word comes to mind, range. And we saw an example of a rangy free safety right there. And sometimes all of your best laid plans of play design, your X's and O's, they can't always account for individual effort defensively. And this was one of those times. Just a terrific play to hustle over there and get the running back to the ground. And the next-gen stats, they tell the story as he was approaching 19 miles an hour on that one. Throwing is Allen on third. Flush to his right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Wilson's throw taken in by Adams. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That catch, number 750 of his NFL career, and it puts him even with not just one, but two Hall of Famers, Michael Irvin and Charlie Joyner. So some pretty good company at 7-5-0. Now you talk about the playmaker, Michael Irvin, and the guy who just made plays, Charlie Joyner. And that's what we're seeing here. Similar style in terms of being dependable, being open, and turning it into plays that you remember. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. There's Wilson to throw. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And they'll get this well past midfield before on, being stopped baby. just Let's before go. the 35. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we can at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. And that, in a nutshell, shows you what this guy is made of. I mean, most guys in the NFL just can't do that. He absorbed the contact, refocused himself, and made a break for the end zone. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now Wilson. This is the tight end to Joku. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. The Wilson going to give to Carter on the draw. And a nice run there, going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 26. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. Well, he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up four. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped him, bringing up fourth down. up a field goal attempt. It would have been a 45-yarder. Now they'll go for it on fourth. Going for it. It's Carter. And try to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short. And he is short. He needed two. He only got one. And the Buccaneers defense holds, and they get the football back. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Here's Allen. Looking left side. He's got it complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Allen going to throw. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. 
On oh, is the punt team now as this one sent away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Here Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, okay, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. With a heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. They'll run with Carter. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation. Pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit, too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. On second down, a run with Carter. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. On third down, Wilson. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 41-yard line. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there of finding him in stride for really good yardage. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Now it's Wilson. A throw to the flat for Carter. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll make it second down. Wilson. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end. Complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 16. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. This will be their first trip to the red zone. They come up first and 10 at the 16. Here's a give to Carter. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 45 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and are controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards, but also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Barons are on the board first here on the road in Tampa. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there, and each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Now the try here for the extra point. It's up and good, and it'll give his guys a 7-0 lead. 
A 10-play drive that time, and it results in a four-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Here's Reed returning. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. This is So the shotgun snap to Allen. And his throw is incomplete. Here's second and ten. Now Allen. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. To throw, it's Allen. Escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great. Now, this is intercepted. He was trying to get it to Davis. Picked off by Robert Spillade. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. And they'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there, got a nice interception, and set up their offense in great shape. Back now comes Tampa Bay. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Throwing again on second down. Allen. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And the Bucs are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Now Jones. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, I know a defensive coordinator is going to be pretty excited about what he just saw there. Great knockback by their front. And now with the ball where it is, I would expect to see the offense throw the ball on second and third down here. Shut him down! Shut him down! Let's do this! After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. On second and goal, Allen. This is caught. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. Jones, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Ronald Jones, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. 
just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Graham Gano on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's Ronald Jones that polishes it off with a touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From the six. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in it, and let him fling another one. On second down, it's Carter. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 58 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. So first and 10 now from the 30. This will be a jet sweep to Crowder. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Two minutes gone by second quarter. Here's Wilson. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from hard incomplete. Now it's third down. From the gun on third down, Wilson. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Back to the ground with Carter. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Let's go. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right out of, and right up the middle. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. On first down, right back to Carter. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. On second down now. It's Carter, and here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. The offense on third down tonight. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. And he gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told. But they're still looking at a fourth down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Go, 
Now on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit here. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it, and this one winds up no good. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun, it's Allen. Quick hitter here, it's complete. The Bucks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. He's been terrific so far. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. On first and 10, it's Carter. Shoves him aside near the 35. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 91 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. To throw is Wilson. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. To throw once more on second and ten. Wilson. And it's complete to Adams. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A big play that time through the air. 37 yards. I think we already know that this guy's going to be ready when they ring the bell for week one. That play, almost routine for him, but still, nice to know that he's still got it. Yeah. On first down. Carter and the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of the full three yards on first down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Throwing is Wilson. They'll set up the screen to Carter. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. Now it's Wilson. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Jason Pierre-Paul drops him for a loss of 14 yards, and it also brings up fourth down. Yes. 
So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. So it's a second missed field goal here in this first half. He'll have to think about that going forward. Maybe time for a little soul-searching as well. Yeah, the head coach might be looking towards the heavens because you wonder if this will affect the fourth down decision-making going forward. If you get fourth and three, fourth and four, situations that used to be calls for the kicker might get a second thought. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so somewhere well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. From the 44, Allen. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To the air, Allen. Oh, battle at the line and intercepted. Picked off at the 36. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Charles, there's something special about one of those big D linemen bringing it in. Off the tip there, really nice coordination. Very much so, and I think what we've seen, and I'm going to put it at about the last five years, maybe a little bit longer, coaches placing a bigger emphasis on ball drills, even for defensive linemen, because possession is so key. When you've got a chance to take one away, you want people comfortable with the football, and it paid off there. They'll start on the ground, Carter, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Throwing on second and eight, Wilson. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Njoku. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Jason Pierre-Paul able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Well, here's where having mobility sometimes can work against you as a quarterback. He thinks he can retreat and outrun the pressure. But that time, they zeroed in on him and took him down for a big loss, partner. A really big loss. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Now Wilson. He's got Njoku over the middle. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. The offense on third down tonight, three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and 15 from midfield now. Here's Wilson. They'll check this one down to Carter. Yeah, he's got to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. Now on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit here. This from 54 yards away. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it on line, but it comes up about a rotation short. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was a crossbar that said otherwise. And that'll deny him a shot at three. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 at their own 44. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. From just shy of midfield, Allen. This one swung out here to Jones. 
And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. First down now, but that clock rolling. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And again it's Allen. A check down here to Jones. That catch good for only a couple. To throw again on second down. Allen steps away to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Now in third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. And he's got a man. It's the tight end Howard complete. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Now Allen. The quick slant caught. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Chris Godwin in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bucs have taken the lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Gano now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. A fairly short kick from the 14. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And they'll have time for one play. That's it. Three seconds to go before intermission. He's going to float this over the middle deep. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked up by Jordan Whitehead. Escapes the defender. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we've hit halftime here in Tampa with a box out in front. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Time now for a check of the next-gen stats for our visitors in the first half, and they were able to have a little bit of success on the ground. The question will be, will they stick with it, or will they be throwing more to try and regain this lead? Meanwhile, for the Bucs, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked, as they have the lead through two quarters of play. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. That's complete to Tyler Johnson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Oh. 
One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Vaughn on first and 10. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Heineke to throw it. This one swung out to Vaughn. Just a gain of a couple there. And they're going to have a third down. Now Heineke. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this one is incomplete. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. As he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out, and now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense it. Looking for numbs, but this is intercepted. Rasul Douglas picks it, uses a stiff arm. So now it's two straight drives that end with an interception. And the first time, the first interception, they ended up getting six points out of it and taking the lead. Now they have an opportunity to increase that lead after their second pick on two drives. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. They can't ask for much more than this. They've got it first and goal from the five. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. On the ground with Vaughn. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They'll try again. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And Gano's kick is right through. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to seven. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way the defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting through. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that could all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that go. lead. Here we go. comes this field general once more leading his offense back onto the field and he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball yeah and you know the quarterbacks that i know that are the best ones the ones that really know how to lead their team they tell them that's on me that's my bad but let's go back out there and move ahead again guys we can get this done one good thing for him it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover big thanks to the defense To throw on second down, Goldberg. Throwing left side, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 
A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that could really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 38. Back to throw, Goldberg. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlines, but incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Off the play fake, Goldberg. And incomplete on the deep ball. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. What an excellent end result for them, but let's go back to the decision, first of all, to go for it all on fourth down. A lot of pressure on the quarterback's shoulders, but they knew he could handle it. Makes the right read there, gets the ball to his receiver, they get the first down, it's now first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. Second and goal from the one. Looking to throw. Goldberg. And it's caught. Touchdown. A great play there there to make the grab and the Barons are back within a score so second and goal there from the one they go to the air and the perfect down to throw the football in this sequence second down is always kind of that do they throw it do they run it they worked it out to perfection on that one by throwing it into the end zone now the try here for the pulling after And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. The Buccaneers offense ready to rock and roll again. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. They'll begin on the ground here with Vaughn. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. They'll break the huddle. Come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Looking to throw. Heineke. And that'll be caught by Darden. The reception good for seven. It's third down. They'll try and run for it with Vaughn. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pick up there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. This is Vaughn. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Working with second and five now. Here's Heineke. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Johnson. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. 
So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Sheldon Rankins busting through to get him for a loss of six. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I could dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Heineke now from the 50. And that's complete to his running back, Vaughn. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. On third down, Heineke. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Let's go. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. They want to be methodical. But they want to take the big strike and go after it right now. He'll air this one out for Mims. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. First of all, foul. Rubbing the pass up. Defense. You got to be smarter than that, man. Come on. So a little extra on top of the big play there. It's tough for guys rushing the passer, but you have to know when the ball is gone. And if you listen, officials will tell you. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back in the 16-yard line. It'll go as a loss of eight and a tough result there on first and goal. The first and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of it. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. And they'll get to him just inside the 15, even after that strong run we witnessed. Interested to see what they dial up here. Third and goal with a lot of green between them and the end zone. Flushed out right. So no sack. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it will still bring up a fourth down. And while he did a good job of sliding around in the pocket, there was nowhere to go with the football, so he had to take off and try and run. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. So now here comes the field goal unit again, and this phase of the game has been an absolute disaster so far. And his kick is good. And that will tie things at 17-all. I don't know too much about the mind of a kicker, but I think, Charles, it's fair to say he needed that one. The confidence has still got to be shattered, but you never know when he's going to be called on for the big one. So you got to keep running him out there and just hope that he straightens things out. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Heineke on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Heineke now. Here's Johnson with a reception. 
And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary time. Pressure gets there on Heineke and down he goes. Full of run show, Fadakasi forced his way through, drops him for a loss of 10 yards. Well, remember, they had the nice gain on the previous play, but they just gave a lot of it back right there on that sack. Yeah, they get the sack, get back some real estate. Felt like the type of play that can spark a defense and swing some momentum. Almost felt like a take that type of a play, didn't it, partner? Heineke's throw complete there to Johnson. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A big play that time on the catch and run. Well, he's certainly trying to earn his win. There's some more looks in the offense once the regular season heats up. If he continues to make plays like that, I think QB1 will look his way a little more often once the regular season begins. First down, Heineke. He finds his man, complete. That's Bradley. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A little tough on the secondary there, in zone defensively. Quarterback had time to survey and find a spot. And if you want to change things up and put a little more pressure on him, you can go to man coverage. Everyone matches up and send more pressure. But you can also do it out of zone coverage if you're worried about what's going to happen on your back end send someone else, drop someone else out of the line. The old zone blitz could come into play to try and get that pressure on the quarterback. Behind the chain, second and 13. Heineke again. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. another play time has expired on this third quarter we'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports back now in Tampa the Bucks on third down they're hitting at just 30 percent three for ten this will be third and a mile from the shotgun it's Heineke flush to his right and he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt Gano's kick is good. And with that, they take the lead here, 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long way from home. The depth puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. On first down, Goldberg. Throw left side complete. That's more. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Bruce Arians taking exception to that last call, and he's going to throw out the challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide, and i got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things, but even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call.
So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they can let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. From the gun on third down, Goldberg. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. On first and ten, Goldberg. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A gain of six there on first. Now a handoff as they run left side. And the Buccaneer defense for the second straight play, flexing its muscle by forcing a loss. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. To throw on third down, Goldberg. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cut back. The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside. And they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they use your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline. You know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot him? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Bucks ready to take over once again. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. First and ten, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They start the drive with Vaughn. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Vaughn. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Working out of the gun. Here's Heineke. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. The Bucks on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and 11 from the gun. Heineke, he's going to sling this deep downfield. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Charvarius Ward. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. A seismic shift in momentum here in the fourth quarter. That's the break that the defense needed. And you know as well as I do, people are going to question the play call in that situation. Sometimes you have to question the execution, not necessarily the call. And in this case, those defenders found a way to give their team a chance. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. 
A golden opportunity for them now following the interception. They need to try to at least get three. Obviously, a touchdown puts them in a much more secure position. Now they try the right side here. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But Rush coming, and he's taken down. Joe Tryon, the blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. And this came from the edge, and those pass rushers, they have so many tricks of the trade to get around blockers. They have a lot of tools in their kit. This was pure speed and athleticism on this play, though. They could barely get a glove on it before he got the quarterback on the ground. On third down, Goldberg. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Throwing on first down, Goldberg. Escaping the pressure right. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Looking to throw on second down. Goldberg. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. From the gun, Goldberg eluding the pressure right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Robert Spillane in there to drop him for a loss on the play. Well, remember, he had the interception earlier. Now he adds the sack. He's really making his presence felt out there. Well, he's putting together a heck of a game. In fact, he's going to bump these plays to his highlight reel, okay? So when he wants to show it off later on, look what I did out there, guys. And this offense, they've got to start paying him a little special attention. He's like a good basketball player, putting stats in every column. So they bring out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That's a double win there, partner. You keep out of the return man's hands, and you pin him inside the five-yard line. Pretty darn good. So out come the Bucks now. They'll run on first down. Vaughn. Yeah, this is going to double their room to maneuver, able to get it from the five to the ten-yard line. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Throwing. Heineke. Into the hands of Darden. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. On first down, it's Reed. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Heineke. And his pass incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. To throw is Heineke. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Charvarius Ward. And he's going to get this on down to the 13-yard line. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. 
all you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter, turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you gotta be super careful. Gotta be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. Now a handoff looking right. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. A great effort there. Ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Barons on just two plays have taken the lead. A late turnover is so often the difference in a ball game. And here the turnover leads to the go-ahead touchdown. So repeat after me, partner. You have to take care of the football. In order to protect the lead, you must take care of the football. Ball security. How many times do they have to say it? They've been preaching it since day one of camp, and it came back to bite them right there. Extra point right down the middle, and that will make this a four-point game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Takes it at the seventh. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Push back. Now Heineke, he'll check this one down to Vaughn. And that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to kick it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent game. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off at the 39. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. The defense now getting set and heading back onto the field. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and outs, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here. See if they can force another three and out. They'll run on first down. 
It's Vaughn, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. From the 29, Heineke. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Vaughn on the handoff. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. That will make it fourth down after a loss of one. The job of any linebacker involves having enough strength to fight off a blocker and get into ball carriers. But in this case, I think we can safely say he beat him right off the snap to get into the backfield and make that play. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Bruce Arians takes a shot there, but his guys come up empty. And as a result, possession switches hands. Well, they were looking for a clutch play there on fourth, unable to come up with it. How about that defense, though, huh? How about that D? Yeah, momentum fourth. swing. And, you know, I remember playing how much fourth downs were emphasized, you know, because, as you said, it's a momentum play. It's also a big test for you, you know. If people are going to go for it on fourth down, they believe you're not up to the challenge. You want to show them differently. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Operating from the gun, Goldberg. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. Wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters to play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it? Easy in and out of the huddle? No mental mistakes? Are they starting to look like a good offensive football team? They'll look to throw again. Throw left side, taken in by Mims. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So now the Bucs down on the scoreboard at time a huge factor you can't say the preseason isn't interesting this has been great as they come up first and ten they'll look to throw and he can't get a throw off he's taken down what a huge play at this point in the game and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Meanwhile, this one knocked down in the backfield. It's incomplete. Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And, boy, that means this next drive is going to start at the three-yard line. Here's Brooklyn to once again go on offense. And now following the desperation turnover on downs, they're set up with a first and goal to go. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And they take a knee. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards. 
Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that'll make this a seven-point game. So this crowd will not go home happy. It's a victory for our visitors. And of course, this is a win they're going to hang their hat on. They go on the road and defeat the defending Super Bowl champs. Partner, they came, they saw, <laughs> they, conquered. they conquered. But before all that happened with the conquering part, they believed. They thought it all week. It was evident when we talked to them before the ball game that they thought they could get this done. And they knew exactly how, had a plan, formulated it and then executed it as a big-time win to take down the defending Super Bowl champs.